Good morning. So uh, it's been a few days um, since I was last on my machine. Uh, been away, um, having some fun. I'll let you guess where I was. Um, so <clears throat> I need to catch up and see where I was. Um, I think we had finished all this initial playing with uh, getting whales. My whales, my new whales front end. I've uh, been able to save. Let's just double check. Oh, yeah, so we've got some basic handle save here. So we have a basic um, GUI. And let me just double check the, what we did in the back end here. Yeah, dot go. Yeah, so we're doing some basics. So I believe we're at a point where we have a working GUI app with, oh yes, with a little, um, a little ping to check the status of the daemon. Let me just give that a quick run then. Okay, so uh, in here, let's just do a quick make, should be okay, okay. If we do a build bin, just a bit gooey, okay. So it's up and running, but it says, hey, up, oh, the daemon's not running. So in the daemon, let's just quickly make sure it's fine. Yep, I didn't do anything there. Oh, may have a larger mug now, but I haven't drunk it all yet. Of coffee. Yeah, and there we go. Okay, so that's working there, and I believe, so if we, uh, let's go in here, let's make, actually I'll do it in the top one here. If I split that in half, and I move that over there so we can see it, and then I'll move that. Go into the CLI. Let's make that a little bit bigger there. Um, okay. Should be able to just do a quick make here. Nothing to do for the CLI. And here if I do a little search for Wibble. Oops, it says do a search for Wibble, a little listing of Wibble. We've got those, okay. Let's delete them. Let's remove, isn't it? Remove. Okay, Wibble. Uh, oh, I'll have to escape this one. And that one. Uh, and we'll get rid of the Wobble versions as well. These are just test ones I do. Take that out as well. So now if I list, list Wibble, we get nothing. Okay. So now let's just double check that this works here. So if I do a wibble back tick, and I do wibble wibble all day long, and do a save. In theory, that's done the thing. We haven't got a listing yet here, but now if we search on the CLI. We've got that there. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have a working um, GUI app built with Wells and Svelte um, and a Go back end. Um, and that's all very well, and it's with Svelte 
uh, version two. Uh, it's not version. It's Velt version two. Wales version two. Um, beta thirty four. But a little dragon has told me, um, has whispered in my ear, that there's some nice changes in the works um, for the Wales um, framework and app. Um, and that I should um, have a little look and uh, maybe integrate those changes into into this app because it's the way forward for Wales. So let's close this off um, and we will um, have a little play. So let's go into the scratch and see what we've got here. Okay. I should probably bump up the uh, what's yeah that'll do okay nice and big there there you go okay right so that's an old Wales app that I had test in there I'll get rid of that oops. So at the moment, um, I have Wells version two beta 34. Um, and this is the package on Nixos that I maintain. Um, so what I want to do is I want to create a quick um, skeleton app with this version then switch to the up and coming version, do the same thing and see what the differences are. Um, because I believe there's quite a few little changes here and there um, that I'll then want to pull forward into Snippet Pixie. <clears throat> so um, with this version, I will just do a Wales init um, and I'll use the Svelte template. And I'll just call it um, Wales, I'll just say B34 for beta 34. Right, should we make that a little bit easier to understand? Beta 34. Yeah, okay. So I believe I'll create a new directory for me. It has. Um, and I will go in there and I'll just make sure that it runs before I then move on and do the other one. So I will do Wales build. And then there should be a build bin Wales beta 34. There we go. And if I just put in hello Ian, hello Ian, it's show time. That's great. Okay. And then because it also leaves um, a few artifacts around, I'm just going to quickly do a Wales dev as well. Let's see how that goes. And that way, when, if I'm doing any comparisons between two folders, I've got everything there that may or may not exist. There we go. So this is in... So if I do just Nixos here, there we go. So that's in dev mode. And in dev mode, the difference is that I can also uh, go into the browser um, and I should be able to do HTTP local host. And I think it's 3411. Oh, I'll better check. Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. Five. There we go. Um, it's a bit stretchy there. But I can do the same thing. Um, don't believe the Svelte thing works there, no. Uh, so this is all the communication going on.
And if I do E in here, it does it, but it doesn't do any communication, which is interesting. Um, and there's nothing major in the console, just that they uh, connected to the back end. So that's cool. So it's up and running, and I can inspect on here. I can go through and do the usual stuff and see all that. Um, and that's all the while um, this is running too. Um, and you can see in the back end. So if I kill that off, um, this will disconnect as well. So I'll close that off too. So um, this is what I'm going to be basing my uh, new version on as such. Um, I have my own fork, um, which I use for doing testing of uh, anything that I might contribute back to Wales, um, uh, including uh, testing, um, testing stuff. So um, this is up to date. Uh, make sure it's up to date. Um, uh, now I need to bring my local version up to date um, before I start building stuff. Well, actually, that's not true. Um, what we're going to do... Okay. Right, okay. So that, that was from the last time I was playing with it. I think what we'll do is we'll do in here. So my um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called a, an overlay. Um, well, I'm not going to create one. I'm going to adjust one because um, I used a, a, an overlay before. This is the next packages overlay. Um, and so what happens is uh, next packages is how I manage um, all my packages on Nexos, and um, they're basically expressions. Let's say, oh, you know, if you need to rebuild this, do this, do this, blah, 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 use these parameters. Um, and they're fine, and they're off in uh, GitHub, um, and then the packages are delivered to you via uh, a CDN and cache and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they're the officially reviewed and checked and okay ones. But if you want to um, play with a new version of a package that hasn't made it through next packages yet, uh, one way you can do that is by creating your own local overlay, um, which says, okay, based on the existing package, or you can effectively rewrite your own. Um, I would also like it to, instead of doing version beta 34, um, I would actually like it just to take this commit from master and build a new local package based on that and call that Wales or whatever. Um, so that's what I'm going to do so that I can test the next up and coming version of Wales that isn't out yet, um, hasn't been tagged. So I'm going to try and get it directly from master. So, okay, um, a couple of things to do then. So the one major one there actually is I need to work on I just need to make sure my dot files are clean. Okay, that should be fine. I don't don't see. Any changes there, just make sure. Okay. And then in my little uh, setup here, in my inv stuff, um, I will, no, I'll do it in Wales. It's a bit cleaner then. So uh, in here, I'm gonna go into my dot files. Nexus, and then I've got common in here. So this is all my setups, the various like desktop or CLI tools and things like that, or just basically package lists. But as you can see, I also have a Wales overlay, um, this one here, and I'm going to edit that. Oh, you can see the last time I used this was for beta 30. 
three. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will change that. I am going to have, I shall call it, well, I don't know whether the next version is going to be beta 35 or whether it's going to be uh, an RC or even a GM. So I'll call it beta 35 J. So I know for sure this is my version. Um, and all this is okay except for the revision here. So this is what I'm going to call the version. Um, and normally you use this fetch from GitHub um, with a rev revision. Um, and it's usually based on the version that you want. Um, so it's usually tag V and then the number, the version number. That's lots of people use that kind of format for their tags. Um, but I want a specific git revision. So I'll just comment that existing stuff out there. And then in here, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look at the last commits. And I will copy the SHA for that. So this is the last commit on master. Yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to stick that in here. So that's the full SHA. Now, because of that, this um, checksum here, uh, which is used by Nix packages to make sure that what gets downloaded is what you expect. Um, this is going to be wrong, uh, but I don't want to keep that particular shard because it will um, it will just assume that the existing download for that shard is okay if I've got it. So I'm going to just override that with zeros, so it doesn't match anything. And then the, in this uh, version of uh, next packages build mode, uh, which is uh, we're building a Go module. There's a secondary checksum, um, which is based on the way that uh, Go has put that all together as such. Um, so I want to zero that out as well. It's basically a check, it's basically a check of all the vendored um, modules and things that come down as part of the build. Okay, so this is going to fail. Um, but let's double check that I've got everything else in here correct. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, it's all been working okay. I haven't changed it since I first this is this overlay was what I used for my initial testing of the package that I submitted. Um and I haven't changed anything bar the versions and shards since. Okay, so I think that's okay. I'm gonna save that. And then I'm just gonna do a um, sudo nexos rebuild switch. So this will attempt to use that. but will fail because the downloaded version from master um, won't have a matching checksum, he says. What I should do though, <laughs> is I should make sure I'm using that overlay. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. Nixos, and this is, I've got a, there we go, right, here we go, I need to turn on using that overlay, 
So this is going to um, add to the overlays um, array um, an import of that common Wales overlay dot next. Uh, so that it will be included in my configuration for this machine, which is called Ian's Tuxedo. So now we'll go back and actually do it. There we go. It's downloading and testing stuff. There's probably a few other things on the way as well. All right, that's it downloading from GitHub. And then it's going to fail out and say, oh, that shard doesn't match. There you go. So I, um, I trust that shard. So I'm going to take that. back in here yeah. and uh, paste that in so that should in theory fix that download check and now it will fail on the check of um, the go build side of things. So we just run it again. There are way, there are better ways of doing this. I think there's actually tools for saying, hey, get me the shard for this repo and stuff. But this way I get to see the gradual build process. I'll just do it this way. Make sure you're sorry, okay. So now it's checked it um, and it's doing a build of the config. Probably downloading Go modules and things at the moment. It's slow. My internet's slow today. Here we go. All right. So this is the um <clears throat> the vendor showing. So yeah, fixed up a der derivation, blah blah blah. Did not like it. Got this instead. So let's use that. Okay. All right. So I'll save that. Um, and I'll come out because I think that should be the last time I need to update that for the moment. And we'll just run this again. This time it should be a lot quicker because it's already done a bunch of the work. There you go. There you go. Right. So now if I go back to here, um, where should I go? I'm going to projects. If I just do whales, if I do which whales, it's still going to look like it's um, the same thing. Uh, it's just in the usual place. Um, but if I take that and if I do a minus L, actually if I do a file, I think it's probably easiest. It'll tell me it's a sim link. And you can see it's a sim link to this package called Wells 
2.0 beta 35ij. So it's recognized that it's a different package there. So in here, um, I have my Wales beta 34 project, um, and I'm going to create a new one now. Um, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to do Wales init using the Svelte template. And I'm going to name it Wales beta 35. Um, although that doesn't exist, that's what I'm calling it now. It doesn't matter. Just uh, for my usage. Okay, so do that. It's got, oh, yeah, so it's still got um, the Wells CLI itself still thinks it's B34 because no versions and tags and things have been done yet. Um, but in theory, that's worked. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just give it a quick run, just like I did the other one. So I'll build it. So I'll do a Wales build without even looking at anything in there. And again, it should take a little bit of time because presumably the dependencies have changed a little bit for this. I've got to download different versions of game modules and stuff and probably NPM. Okay, so in theory, we've got a build bin something. Yep, okay. So let's run that, let's see. There we are, so that's the usual app. If I do hello in, hello in, it's showtime, okay. And if I do a Wales, oh, is it Wales Dev? It is, isn't it? Yeah, Wales Dev still. There we go. We've got a different setup here. Look, um, it's telling me. Um, oh, I've done that wrong. Ha <laughs> ha. Oops. I've just realised that's not going to work. So if I look at the back oh, backlog on that. It's going to have failed, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it was not happy. Um, it did fail to build the front end. And that is because um, if I look at the Go mod, um, it is using the current released version 34. At the end here, there'll be a replace statement. And I didn't update it. Okay. Now I don't want to risk screw anything up there. So I'm going to, for, for, for my testing and seeing what's what. So I'm just going to delete that. And then I'm going to do it properly again. Okay. Because I don't want to risk doing anything daft. Okay, so we'll do another Wales in it. Okay, and then I'm going to go into Wales 35. And now this is when I need to use my checkout and I need to make sure it's up to date. So, um, I can do it in this one now. Uh, so we'll go into projects, GitHub, your name Jones, Wales. So this is my checkout. And I need to do a git to fetch minus p so I can prune anything. Uh, and then a git pull. Okay. It's done a bunch of stuff there. Lots of doc updates, by looks of things. That's good. Um, but yes, there's some 
Well, that's still more doc stuff there. But then we've got all these various changes to the parser uh, and the command itself. And the web, so there's lots of stuff been going on here and in particular runtime stuff, the JS and so on. Windows. Yeah. Lots of work been going on since uh, I last pulled this down. Busy, busy, busy. Right. So um, that should be up to date. Let's just do it. Make sure there's nothing. There's not dirty or anything. That's good. Okay. Okay. Right. Now we can fix up the Go mod. So I'm going to replace this bottom line here. Yeah, let's make it a bit easier to read. So uh, my I'm going to replace it with home in projects github.com in Jones Wales. Okay. Before we do anything there. Take a copy of that. Right, so let's double check, that's okay. I think it's okay. Save that, and then while I'm here, ls minus l is correct. Okay, cool. All right. So what we'll do now is a files build. And in theory, it's using the master checkout for the framework and everything. For the Go command line tools, everything. Yep, so it should be good. Okay, some new stuff coming down now. That's better. Okay, so let's give it a quick run. Build bin wells b to thirty five. Hello, good. Right, that works. And then we'll do our wells there. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this will work this time. There we go. So we have an app. Okay. Just in so there's two things now. We've got front front end dev server uh, and a dev server URL for the back end as well. That's interesting, right? But I'm gonna see what that does. I think that should be the one I want for the browser. Let's have a look. Is that correct? Whoa. At least it scales right. Let's just pick it there. So if I look at the console. All right, and that's one of the big changes. Uh, it's now using Vite. Uh, more, well, basically more than it did before. It did still use it for this Svelte stuff, but it's now using it as one of the dev tools. 
So if I put in here and do greet, it does. Hello, Ian. It's showtime. Smart. Look at that, no network stuff at all. I don't understand that. It must be doing some compiling stuff. Cool, we will see that in a minute. Um, right, okay, so we have a working setup um, and it's using this new um, mechanism for doing all the dev server stuff. So what we're going to do, um, I should call that off as well, is we're going to inspect it and see what the difference is between this old and new stuff and see what the uh, what changes I might need to then port forward into um, Snippy Pixie. Um, so we need to do a diff of these two directories um, that we've got. So let's go back to meld. Look at a couple of folders. So we're going to look at uh, home projects. Wells beta thirty four, and we're going to then compare that with thirty five. And it's, yeah, just a two-way compare. There we go. Right, so build we don't actually care about. Um, and don't think I care about dist at the moment either on the front end. Um, we have node modules, definitely don't care about what's in there. Or public, that's just a favicon. It's the source we care about. So we have um, these. And the JSON down the bottom as well. The actual go side stuff is going to be interesting, I hope. Um, OK, so the actual Svelte front end obviously it kicks off with, it's got quite a little bit of stuff here. There's no difference there between the main JS, that is exactly the same, which is great. It's just doing the usual setup for hanging Svelte app off of a div. Um, looks like the renamed the CSS from global CSS to style CSS. Uh, so that's probably not something I need to worry about. So this is the global stuff that's gone. And this is the new stuff. There's no, it's hard any difference there, if any. I can't see it straight off, so that's fine. Don't need to worry about that. Um, but what's in app.svelte? Okay, a few changes here then. Um, that's probably a bit small, isn't it? Let's up, bump up the text on that. Uh, I think it's that I need to update. Is that better? Yeah. And tab width will make four. Uh, do, do, do. Don't know whether any of these are any better. No. Okay. I think we'll keep it like that. Okay. Right, so there's lots of blue changes here. Um, so the big thing, instantly noticeable, is we're doing import greet as a function. 
Whereas beforehand, it was call in window go main app greet, then the name, and then getting the promises result. Here, we're importing the greet function from Wales.js go main app dot js. I think that's new. Um, and so we've just got a nice function we can call and get the promise and result, blah, blah, blah. A lot neater, a lot easier to work with. That's great. Uh, that was the thing that was was mentioned to me that I'll enjoy. Um, by the little dragon, otherwise known as Lee. Um, so what have we got else? Is there anything major here? That's the thing, isn't it? It's a lot simpler. The main... Let's copy that up so we've got... Otherwise, it's usual stuff. And I've, I mean, I've removed all this anyway, all this HTML, because I've got my own uh, basic stuff in Snippet Pixie. So the biggie is that we can now do this. We can import our functions um, generated by the Go backend through this kind of mechanism. So that's cool. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, it's just CSS and stuff is fine. No changes really there, bugs things. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so that's the big one there. No, oh, actually, it's on by myself. Okay, well, I guess I'll be able to resolve that and find it. Wales.js go main app.js. Okay, so what else have we got that's different? Um, that I need to worry about. Well, I don't suppose I need to worry about anything in Wales.js because that is all auto-generated. What's in the readme? No changes there, really. Okay. That's, uh, let's have a look at that. The app.js is the new thing. <laughs> They're Welsh. Uh, this file is automatically generated. Do not edit. Uh, and I have no idea how to say that. Um, anyway, um, export function greet. Right, okay. So it's just a bit of sort of syntactic sugar, really. Uh, it's basically re-exporting the function uh, that is generated. Cool. Let's get rid of that. Uh, should I have a quick look at that? I don't know what that is. Right, okay. So that's just the type TypeScript definition as such. What's in the runtime? <laughs> nice. I'm glad it's not as minified as that. It's easier to read. Okay, so that's all the basics there. Just re-exported. All the runtime stuff that you can use in your app, which is nice. Okay. Let's close off that uh, source we've looked at, readme we've looked at, index has changed as a quick check at that. Okay, that's just the usual stuff there, it's just, just slight tweaks. And of course we've renamed the app and so on there, so that's fine. Uh, package JSON, right, this is where it might get interesting. 
Okay. So they've just sort of anonymized, anonymized? Uh, called it a sort of generic name now instead of pulling in the app's name, which is probably a good idea. Makes it a bit easier to do. So what have we got? So we've lost build watch. Um, presumably because Dev is doing it all now. We'll see in a minute. Um, don't, yeah, so dropped out the author because we don't really care about it. Which is fine because everything's kind of higher up anyway. Um, and then we've got just an updated beat. Okay, so that's interesting. So package JSON, I should probably fix up. So that's the first. That's the second change. The first is to update functions. Um, in my uh, sorry, function use to do the import. And then the second is maybe just to tweak the uh, package JSON in the front end as well um, to maybe match it up with this. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what I'll do. As a reminder, I'll keep that tab open. There's nothing else in source. And then package JSON. So I'll keep that tab open. And then let's have a look at Vite. Oh, okay. All right. So Okay, a little bit of space in that's been taken out there. Uh, still using Svelte.js Vite plugin. And then it's just using Svelte. So all the other roll up basically options have been taken out. And it's just letting this Svelte plugin do its job because we're not needing to override any assets by the looks of things. Okay. I'll keep that open as well then. This is right. Okay, so that's everything in, that's everything in front end. That could be of issue looked at. All the scripts have gone. That's fine by me because I couldn't use them anyway, because they had um, stuff in them in the, they had, uh, so, what's it going to show? Yeah, had like bin bash and stuff in them and I can't use that anyway. But I didn't need them. Uh, can I tap no? Right. So scripts I can remove, that's good. Wales JS. Okay, so that's the stuff that's changed and this is what's been generated. And I don't need to worry about this at the moment. So I'm good there. That's gonna be auto-generated. Can I get there? No. I've not used this mail thing before, but I just knew I needed it for today, so I've installed it. It's quite good though. Okay. Right, that's dealt with. Uh, well, the README won't be anything. All right, to run in live development mode, run, run Wales dev in the project directory. In another terminal, go into the front end directory and run npm run dev. The front end dev server will run on 
localhost 34115. Connect to this in your browser and connect to your application. Okay, don't quite understand that. Because I didn't need to do any of that. And the front end dev server will run on. The guys want to connect to this in your browser and connect to your application. Connect to this in your browser. I think that should probably be like to connect to your application. Maybe. Um, build into build, uh, blah, 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 Wells website. Okay, so there's nothing really new there, apart from that weirdness about talking about the npm run dev, which I don't quite understand, but I'll maybe give that a play later on and see what that means. Okay. I'm going to look at, yeah, I'll look at go app dot go. Wow. Okay. So everything is the same, except just taking out all the, all the runtime functions you can implement. For startup, DOM ready, before close and shut down. Okay. So they were probably like, okay, documentation will suffice for that. Or just make it simple to get started with as possible. That's good. I think that's a good idea. Because that is a little bit confusing when you see it first time. You don't realize that all you really need to do is this stuff down here. This is where you hang off all your actual functionality. So that's not bad, actually. I like that. Um, Having said that, I am using this. Um, I think I'm using Startup to kind of bring up Dbus and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but there's basically nothing changed there. So that's good. It's the same same setup. You have an abstract. Um, you have a new app um, function to initiate that. In fact, I might be doing it in there, I guess. Oh, we'll find out in a minute. Um, and then you have your functions, and that's not changed at all. Yet we're still able to use this new functionality in the front end of like importing that function instead of using the full runtime path, which is great. So that's good. Okay. So we've done that. Uh, go mod. So a quick look. Okay, there's changes. Basically, a bunch is removed. And then some versions changed. That's interesting. So I will have to basically do a mod tidy, I expect, and see if that fixes everything up. And of course, my replace at the end. I'll keep that tab open as a reminder. Okay. And then the main has changed. Okay, a bunch of stuff removed again. So we've still got a title, width, height, and assets. But all the other options have been removed in the demo. A 
of course, yeah, all these functions have been taken out in the actual app dot go. So they have to be taken out here. Okay. So presumably all these, these are all defaults anyway, so just taking them out for simplicity which is a good idea, I think. Okay, and all the Windows stuff has been... Windows and Mac. That's gone. Which is fine by me. Okay, so I should be able to just delete all this stuff and not have any problems. Okay, so I'll keep that open as a reminder that I can clean up Um, all right, and I've changed the uh, the error thing. So instead of doing a fatal, I'm dying. We just show an error. Okay. Not sure how I feel about that. If it doesn't come up, then I might want it to basically panic out effectively. But everything else is the same, still the same kind of setup for getting it going. It's just taking out all these options. That's fine. And then wells.json, the config. Oh, okay. Again, it's like simplifying things. So we have, obviously the name change anyway, an output file name uh, we would expect to change on these two things. But we have a front end build, npm run build is the same. Yeah, front end store, front end dev watcher. That's changed. npm run dev. Okay, yeah, because we saw build watch get removed from the package.json. And then we've got front end dev server URL, which is new. Wells JS dire has gone. Okay. It's kind of it's a nicer setup now. It's a little bit more sort of generic. You're not injecting lots of whale stuff in here. So the dev server URL is the 3000 one. Okay. But otherwise... This other stuff has gone. Cleaning the debounce. Oh, dev server URL. Well, okay. There's, I guess that's a re-implementation of that, but with the the new setup. Beat. Okay, and we're taking out the Windows stuff at the bottom. Okay. Right. Well, we'll keep that one around because we need to um, clean up for that as well. Okay, let's try this then. So, um, in fact, we should probably do it in reverse order there. We'll start from the bottom up. And we'll make the changes. So, I am going to, right, I'm going to clear out all these, I think. And then we'll come back to them as we need them. I think I can just like close all tabs. There we go. 
Right. Let's close these off. That can be done. Right. So, miles.json. We are. Well, should we just take this and then see what happens? <laughs> because I can do it, because I'm in Goland. I mean, there's nothing there that I absolutely need other than sort of. I wonder if that name thing's going to be an issue, though. We'll see. Help a file name, Stimpy Pixie GUI. Okay, well, we'll see in a second. I'm going to get rid of all that and insert that. And then, right, so I've got that still, so I can put that back in. And then the output file name, snippet, pixie, GUI. And that's it, isn't it? Font end build is there still. And then all this stuff really don't care about. We've got that. Miles JS done, done, done. Okay. Give it a quick review for one, make sure it's okay. Okay, so that's Miles JS done, in theory. Okay. So I will close off that tab, I think. And then main.go, we can do a big cleanup. Uh, now, I might not have a lot of that stuff in there, but I'll check in a second. So we're basically coming down to the minimum. I wonder if I can keep some of my stuff, though, because I do have a minimum max, although I don't really care about the max. I'd be interested to see what happens if I take that out. The min I do. So I'll keep the minimums because uh, I really don't want it to get too small. Um, and then I might nab that as well. So really, all it is is taking everything out bar title, width, height, and assets. Okay, I do have these options here. Now, they will possibly go away in a minute. We'll see. Okay, let's change that. He says. We can take out all the Windows and Mac stuff. Title, width, height, min, and I'm going to take out the max. I don't care about this stuff at the moment. That doesn't make any difference. Assets we want to keep. Menu we don't have at the moment, so we can always put that back in later if we need it. Um, logo again, log level debug I'm going to keep that there for a second that might be handy uh, and I can't I'm not mucking about with these just at the moment 
and I'll take that out because I need to double check which ones of these I'm using. But then we're binding and then whatever. So Oh, this is gone as well, isn't it? Build app icon is gone. Okay. That'll be interesting to see what happens there. And I can take out in theory. I oh, probably can't take out log. Because I think I'm using that. Uh, Mac. Mac and Windows can go. Oh, it's done it already. That's good. Thank you, Go. Land. That's smart. All right, I won't mark a pebble then anymore. Just do a reformat there. And I'll keep that in just for the moment. Because I now need to look at, well, I'm going to look at app.go. Let's see what I've got. So, startup I am using. Dom ready I'm not using. So I'm just going to follow their lead and I'm just going to remove stuff I'm not using. Before close, I am using because I'm doing the debus stuff. Just double check out and take anything out. And shut down, I'm not doing anything. So I'm going to take that out as well. And this is my stuff here. So this is a little helper function I made uh, for showing errors. I've got my little ping and then I've got my add snippet. So that's my my bare minimum of functions. Um, and these are my packages that I need. And then there's the runtime stuff there. Is that in? That must be because of the um, dumb stuff. Where is it? Hold on a minute. What am I using it for? Maybe not. We'll see. I'm not seeing any other use of runtime. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's me, yes. So I'm doing the message dialogue stuff. That's fine. So it has to be used for that. Okay, that's good. Okay. So that is app.go um, and I am using startup and before close. There we go, look. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And I'm going to leave the log level and uh, we'll see if that's okay. It should be okay. I'm sure that's just, they've taken it out of the template just to make things a little bit cleaner. Okay, 
Right, so in theory, I'm done with app, go and main go. Go mod. Right, this is going to be interesting. So the first thing I need to do Where's oh, it's there? So I have beta 34 still on that. So we'll keep this here. This is the big E though. I'll make sure that I'm using my local at the moment. Ooh. Yes, I know, I know, I know. That's the thing. Give us a chance. Right, home in projects. GitHub, well, I've run out of time, github.com, Ian M. Jones, Wales, okay, home in projects, github.com, okay, right, all these things in theory have gone away. Let me double check before I delete them that I'm going to think else. So um, we've done main. We're in go mod. I'll keep that for a second. Oh, what else we got at the end here? Nothing. Okay. Oh, the Vite. Let's quickly do the V thing. Uh, where is that? Feet, feet, feet should be in front end. There. That's in oh, what's that do? Unused default export. Well, export default. Define config plugins blah. Let's just build when we move in, isn't it? Basically, and then to removing the comma at the end. Okay, give it a reformat. There we go. Now it's which oh, we don't need that. Thank you. And import blah. I could have just copied and pasted that one actually, couldn't I? Export default to find config plugins felt. Done. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Done that one. Oh, I've got to do package as well. And I think in that case, we'll definitely take the lot. We'll just call it front end. Did I add anything? I did. Okay, all right. Hmm. All right, we've well, got to be careful here. So what I'll do is I'll take scripts, because that's changed. Well, not much, it's only the build watch is gone. That is it. Okay, I'll take that out. Um, we'll call it 
pull in this front end now. I will do that, that's fine. I also didn't like the um, space in what I had anyway. Okay, so we are still doing private true. I've got my own version. Type module, scripts, dev build preview. Vite, to Vite build, Vite to preview. Dev dependencies. Uh, such as blah, blah, blah. One next 30. Svelte 330, yeah, 44. I've got my awesome 18 inspire router and Vite we want to bump up. And I'm going to have to go soon because I'm late. Okay, um, and Dorfer can stay, I think. Don't really care about that, I suppose. Okay, in theory, that's fixed up. Um, going to do in here I'm going to do a make tidy and we'll see what happens okay yeah, there we go. Removed all the extraneous stuff. And upgraded a bit. Okay, in that case. Come out here. Now. So that's me just done, done the package, I've done the go mod, it's just app, app.svel, I need to change, I haven't got time, I've got to go. Um, so I'm not going to get to finish, am I? It's not going to take too long, let's quickly do it. He says. Okay. I've got a bit more to do than Yeah, so it's not just in here, is it? So my changes are actually in components where I have some stuff. So what I'm going to do yeah. Thing is, nothing's been generated yet, so I won't be able to do what I need to do. And I really do need to go. Um, so next time we will do like it says at the bottom here, but you can't probably see at the moment if I move myself across. So it's saying update dependencies from NPM. So I'm going to have to do that um, because we have changed them. And yeah, there's too much. I, I can't do that. And I've got to go. So, um, okay. Uh, yep. So I'll close this off and I'll say 
thank you very much for watching um but until next time you take care bye